Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I appreciate you coming. It's a special time of the year for the program, and we get to go to day two, where we celebrate the hard work, the determination, the persistence of our students to learn and develop the skills and capacity to go into communities to help individual students through school-based ag education. And so this morning, we have Miss Heather Watson, who will be working in Kalineski Valley with Marty Holland. And Heather's going to answer the questions, who does she aspire to be as a teacher, what opportunities is she engaged to become a better ag educator, and how is she prepared to maximize that next 15 weeks. We will follow the presentation with about 15 minutes of questions. Now these questions, will, I'm preparing you, it's going to happen, we'll ask the audience, then we'll ask our online audience, we are Facebook living this, and uh, Zoom. And then we will ask the teacher education panel, and like I said, that will take about 15 minutes. So without further ado, Heather, the show is yours. Great. Thank you. That was a lovely introduction. Um, to get started, as he said, uh, my name is Heather Watson. I will be student teaching at Kalineski Valley High School. If you don't know where that is, that's up in Tioga County, so I'm going north, where we're going to get probably a lot more snow than there is here. And I'll be joining alongside Marty Heiler and um, Mr. Andy Boyer. The number one question that my students are going to ask me the first day is, who really is Miss Watson? So I have two things right here on the screen that kind of represent who I am. Uh, the number one is agriculture because I grew up on my family's fifth generation dairy farm about four miles outside of State College. And Agriculture is really deeply rooted into my family, but it's also deeply rooted into me. Um, I have a passion for not just animal agriculture, but also plant agriculture and a lot of uh, other things, as I'll um, briefly talk about later in the presentation. Baseball. Baseball's on here not because I actually played the sport. I played softball. But I like to look at life like a game. So to get started, Dr. Foster said that I will be answering three questions. Those are like the bases for the game of student teaching. So the first base is who do I aspire to be as a teacher? Second base is what opportunities have I engaged in? What opportunities have I engaged in to become a better agricultural educator? And third base, how am I prepared to maximize my student teaching internship? So we'll start on first base. This is my philosophy. Um, actually, my philosophy is more like a page long, but this is the piece that I really feel brings it home. And it says that learners, the learner does not provide the amount of learning that is the educator. So in order to guide and provide access to information rather than being the only source of information. So there's three components that I want to focus on and that's in my program philosophy, and that's classroom management, FFA, and SAE. Most of you know this as the three circle model. Now we're gonna go on to classroom management. So also on my first day of teaching, I'm going to be setting the ground rules for everyone. And these boards over here will be displayed in my classroom. So the first board here is classroom expectations. And it says, first, be present. Second, be respectful. Three, we laugh together. Four, we are willing to try new things. Five, we learn from mistakes. And six, we are safe. Then it goes into classroom procedures, which is arrive on time and ready to learn, complete warm-up activity, ask questions, maximize the day, and teacher dismisses the class. Then we go over your classroom con um, consequences. So those are more like your verbal warnings, meeting with the teacher after class, maybe calling parents or calling the principal, hopefully we don't have to do that, or further action if necessary. So in my future program, this is the way I see it. I see four different pathways. I see animal science, plant science, agricultural mechanics, and ag business. These are four subjects that really I have found to be the most inspiring in my education and throughout my life. Um, animal science because I grew up on a dairy farm, plant science because we also had crops, ag mechanics because 
even though my dad wouldn't let me help him all the time in the shop, I always like to get my hands dirty. And I'm learning a lot more um, through other courses up here at Penn State. And agribusiness, because it's really important that you keep up with the markets to really know where the industry is going to be in the future. Uh, my future classroom, I would love to have a shop that looks like this. So as you can see, I have a welding area, a working area, a classroom, there's storage, and there's places for projects to be as well. I'm sure a lot of you have had um, agricultural facilities and have seen a similar setup to this before. So part of our class here at Penn State, <coughs> We're given the task to build a $15 project that we're going to utilize when we go to student teach. So my $15 project, it's actually cheaper than $15. It's $13. And it is what I like to call a bread box. I think you could fit a perfect loaf of bread in there. And it can sit on your counter and you can make a really nice design so that it catches people's eyes as they walk in to your kitchen. Bread boxes are kind of a thing of the past, but I'd love to see them come back into kitchens. Also in my future program, I would love to see SAE integration. I feel that SAEs really provide that hands-on experience for the student, uh, whether it be on the farm or it would be in a job where they could be at a veterinarian clinic or they could be working out in the fields as like a crop scout or something. Just something that they can get out there and they can take what they had in the classroom and push it to furthering their skills and their abilities in the future. Also FFA integration. I was a part of the FFA when I was in high school and it grew my passion for agriculture and it grows a passion for everyone who is involved in this organization because they feel like they're more than just one. They feel like they're a part of something. Now to get people involved in both FFA and agricultural classes, uh, we put together a recruitment video. I worked with Carly Wright and we made this little presentation that I hope you enjoy. I'll show you a brief part because it is 3 minutes and 13 seconds. So in that recruitment video, you actually did see all three parts of the three circle model. You saw classroom instruction, you saw SAE, and you saw FF, FFA integration within it. Uh, I was not able to make it out to the National FFA convention this year, but that song that was playing in the background of our recruitment video was the National Convention's um, song. Their theme was I Can, We Will. So again, of playing as a team and being a whole and feeling like you're actually a part of something. That's the number one reason why I love FFA and that's the number one reason why I chose that song. All right. I also would love to see community integration in my future program. I'd love to see an Ag Advisory Board, alumni, and adult learners. I'll actually have the chance to experience this while I'm at Kalineski Valley. I already attended one of their advisory board meetings and I learned a lot while I was there. A lot of things that we covered in um, program planning, which is AEE, 
413. Um, I learned everything in that class we covered while we were at the advisory board, whether it would be um, talking about grants or talking about funding, any all the way down to um, what they were going to be teaching that year. Uh, also, while I'm there for adult learning, I'll have the chance to do a community-based unit where my kids are going to learn how to do pesticide education. They're going to take their test, and then we're going to get bring the community in, and we're going to um, also help them get pesticide license or educate them a little bit further on their knowledge. All right. So now we're back to the bases. We're going to go to second base, which is what opportunities have I engaged in to become a better agricultural educator? Here at Penn State, I've had a lot of opportunities to become a better educator through multiple different classes. Um, listed first are all my agricultural education classes. I have Ag <laughs> Agricultural and Extension Education 100, 311, 412, 413, and 350. But the ones that I also would like to focus on are the ones that are outside of agricultural education because these are the classes where I also learned a lot in um, because I feel like as an ag educator, you're also still an ag learner because you want to keep growing your knowledge so that you can keep growing your students. Um, I learned a lot, especially in two classes, Animal Science 201. I grew up on a dairy farm my entire life. I thought I knew animals until I got to that class. But the information that was provided in there, I will hold dear to me and then I hope that I can instill it within my students in the future. Same with um, field crop management. I feel like uh, that agronomy is often a place that is overlooked within a agricultural education program so I would love to bring that back into my program and I'm glad that I got the knowledge that I did within that class and that I've had the opportunity to take all these courses here at Penn State. I wish I could take more. <laughs> Some certifications that I have, I have the National Safe Tractor and Machinery Operation Program Community Instructor Certification. Just got this fall. Got, just got that this fall. Um, also, um, CMEX AI Breeding course certified. That was this summer, and then first aid and CPI certified, and that was also done this fall. So hopefully I'll be able to utilize um, the top two in my classroom. I don't, not really sure if I want to utilize the first aid and CPR because that would mean that there is a problem. <laughs> Some professional development experience and experiences that I've had. Uh, so I've been able to attend the domestic study away for two years. I went to Mississippi and I also went to Tennessee. Both experiences uh, opened my eyes to not just um, ag education but also agricultural as a whole outside of the state of Pennsylvania. And then some experiences that I've had. I've had two really amazing internships. I've also been able to uh, be very active in my county as an ag advocate. So two of my internships were, one was with Penn State in weed science. So when I go to teach that community uh, based unit in pesticide education, I've gotten a lot of knowledge from my summer internship. And then I also got to work with Lando Lakes as a member of relations. So I've had the chance to actually be out in the field and talk with farmers. And I really think that industry um, experience is important when you come into the classroom because you can actually talk about what's going on out there to your students. Diversity. Uh, Unlike a lot of people, I grew up in a very diverse area. As I mentioned before, I grew up four miles from Penn State University, which means I grew up in State College. And in high school, I knew what that language barrier was. I had students in multiple classes or at lunch that were talking in their native language and I didn't understand what was going on. And sometimes that would be a task for a, that, that would be a task for a teacher and being able to see how the teachers utilize that in my high school is something that I will take um, further into my program and going into student teaching as well. I was a Special Olympics volunteer since the time that I was 12 and I'm 21 now. So uh, working with these kids in uh, special populations has been an amazing experience and I'm ready, 
I would love to integrate them into my courses. Um, then with farm tours, I've been able to work with a range of age, so anywhere from kids that are like five years old to adult learners who are 40 plus. So I really feel like this diversity is going to help me as an ag educator and help me while I go student teach. Now we're finally at third base. So how am I prepared to maximize my student teaching experience? Um, mentioned earlier, my cooperative center is Kalineski Valley High School, located in Tioga, Pennsylvania. Um, student enrollment is about 100, about 120 students. And there's two <laughs> teachers, Mr. Heiler and Mr. Boyer. Mr. Heiler is the one pictured right there beside me. Um, looks like I just rolled out of bed, but he told me that we were only getting one picture and that was it. So a uh, little bit about my cooperative center. They are with they have two zip codes, meaning that they one is ag they're considered ag general and ag mechanics based um, within their program. And I feel like that's a good opportunity for me, especially because I'm not really strong in ag mechanics, so I'm looking forward to going there and learning a lot. Some strengths that they have is their Ag Advisory Board and then how passionate those two teachers are. I've had the opportunity to be at bus duty with Mr. Heiler and just having the opportunity to see how the students engage with him is uh, amazing because the kids are saying, Mr. Heiler, I hope you have a good weekend, or they're coming up running and giving him hugs and knuckle punches. Kids that I didn't even see in the classroom that just maybe even know him through the community because he's also the uh, assistant chief um, at the fire department. Um, some weaknesses that they have that I'd like to work on with them is the timing for FFA meetings. It's really difficult with the type of schedule that they have um, to really have uh, meetings, which, bringing that up, I probably should pass this around. In here, you'll find the bell schedule for them. They have 43 minute classes and they also have 80 minute classes that like run at the same time. And there's no, there's really no time for um, like tutorial or clubs to meet. And then a lot of kids are very active in sports up there. It's a very small school so kids try to get involved as much as possible so they can't really meet after school as well. I'll also pass out this. I forgot to pass this out earlier. It's my uh, laboratory management plan. All right. What are some strengths and weaknesses of Miss Watson? So some strengths of mine is I have a positive attitude, or at least I try. And I'm pretty laid back, but being laid back kind of coincides with my weakness, which is time management. <laughs> um, I'm also my biggest self-critic, um, so I'm pretty hard on myself when it comes to things, but hopefully I can work on both time management and being a self-critic at my time of student teaching up in Kalineski Valley, and hopefully in the future as well. And I'm looking forward to working with all my cohort members in the future. Uh, throughout the next four months and after graduation. That's everything. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause, brother. Uh, I do appreciate you sharing. I'm excited to get to the questions. I can tell that we already have some folks tuning in from Nashville, Tennessee, and from California, so I'm sure we're gonna have some great questions. Let's start uh, from here in the audience. What's the question you have about what Heather presented or interested about? Hey, Lady. Um, considering Dr. Foster just brought up um, Nashville, uh, can you share a little bit about like the professional development experience maybe at um, NAAE or PAAE that you plan to take into the classroom? So at NAAE, we had the opportunity to go to a lot of workshops, and there was this one workshop where it was all about advocacy for your Ag Ed program, and that is something that I hope to take back with me um, 
while student teaching and also into my future program. Uh, she talked about one pagers, which is basically kind of like a kind of like a resume. You know, when you go into an interview, you give them a one pager, something brief where they can just see, boom, boom, boom. This is what your program is about. So that three circle model that I talked about earlier, like classroom instruction, SAE, and FA, FFA, I would put those as my three big points in my one pager, and that's what I would take back through a workshop that I had at NAAE. Thank you very much. Just look over to our online audience. Tiffany, right. what question would you like to pose? We have a question from Facebook. This is from Allison Hoover. She'd like to know, what unit are you most looking forward to from Kalineski, and or what unique lessons have you already created? That's a tough one. Mm. So you're thinking about what yeah. are you most looking forward to teaching and what's one lesson perhaps that's pretty unique that you've created that you're excited to see how it works? Uh, so I'll start with the unique one. Uh, the one that sticks out to me the most is my exotic animal unit because I've never actually personally ha taken a class where I've learned about exotic animals. So writing that unit and just seeing the amount of ins information or the activities that you can do with your students through exotic, e an exotic animal unit um, really opened my eyes and that's something that I think is going to be really unique to take with me <coughs> and also use in the future. <laughs> um, one that I'm looking most forward to is in my Ag Mechanics 2 course, there's a building and construction unit and the kids are going to be building model barns. And the model barns that has like the winning title held over a ton of weight. So I'm really interested to see um, how much weight these kids can build their model barns to hold in the future. Um, so that's the one I'm looking most forward to. Thank you. All right, we'll go to the teacher education panel. Dr. Ross? Heather, how will you continue your professional growth and cultivate your own personal teacher identity through your student teaching and beyond? Do you say personal growth or your professional, professional growth? Teacher identity. Okay. Uh, so for professional growth, um, I will really want to get involved in the community that's up at Kalineski. Um, so some professional organizations that are offered here in Center County are like your Farm Bureau and um, your Young Farmers. I've never really been involved in those while I've, I've been here. So while I have, hopefully I have some time uh, while I'm up there or I'll gain some connections to get involved with the Farm Bureau or to get involved with um, the Young Farmers. Really see what opportunities that they have, um, not just here in this county, but maybe even across the state. And then, um, what was the second part of the question? <laughs> How will you use that to cultivate uh, your teacher identity? Okay. Uh, the way that I will use that to cultivate my teacher identity is, um, as I said earlier, like at, I still feel like as a teacher you are a learner. Um, so like I constantly want to keep uh, having a growth mindset and like I want that to be like my teacher identity is like always growing and like never just like staying so that then everyone else can grow with me as well. Good. To the audience. Rachel. It's gonna say don't ask me a poultry question. Again, so be ready. Tiffany, do we have okay. any from our virtual audience? We do. This is from Jesse Lumpkins in Tennessee. She says, Hey Heather, what's one thing you're concerned about? And what solution or resource do you have that could already help you feel better about that concern before it comes up? So a concern that I have is actually just uh, with one student. I have a student who has what you consider a reading and writing disability. And my concern with that is he told me that he doesn't need to know how to read and write because he's just going back to the farm. However, um, through my workforce education class, I've learned about different ways to approach that situation and really try to like build a relationship with that student and then from there try to um, get them to be more engaged in learning and different activities that are going on that could involve reading and writing as well. Awesome. Dr. Curry. 
Heather, we've seen a reinvigoration of SAE over the past few years in agricultural education, and I'm curious as to uh, where you see the importance of super supervised agricultural experience and the reasons and the importance behind visiting students in their SAEs. So I'm going to start about off with the importance. Um, I feel it's really important because uh, to visit your students' SAEs because I know in high school, I probably shouldn't say this, but uh, my SAE was probably only visited once uh, throughout the entire time. So I would like, I, I know that if I had more visitation, I probably would have been more, um, hard on myself to actually get my record books done you know been like oh my teacher came and visit I need to go in and start doing my record books um, that way I can keep up to date and really try to like push myself in my SAE instead of just kind of staying where I'm at uh, I feel like the importance of it is it really gets those students those hands-on experiences so when you get those experiences too, it's kind of like having an internship. It just builds your resume even more so that when students go out into, into the career world, they can go and they can have all this on their resume and say, I've had the opportunity to work with this or I've had the opportunity to like raise an animal, have that response, showing that they have responsibility, showing that they have time management. So that's how I would really see the importance of SAE. Okay, coming back to my live audience. All right, Olivia. I, I, in your presentation, you mentioned that um, the school that you're going to, they don't have time for FFA meetings. Mm -hmm. um, in your opinion, do you think that that is because they don't um, necessarily place a high value on FFA, or is it just because they have lack of time because of school um, restraints? And if it is um, due to not valuing FFA to its highest peak, um, what do you think you could do to change that while you're there? So I think they do value FFA. Um, they they get involved in a lot of the leadership conferences. So they take their students to ACES. They take their students to SLLC. They also go to state days and compete. Um, they were actually the state winners in um, land judging. So they do give those stu their students still those opportunities in FFA. I really just think it is the time schedule that they have with the school and with the students as well. Um, I know their officer team that they have right now, they're very active within not just the school of sports and clubs, but also within the community too. Alright, this is another question from Allison Hoover. She asks, how or with what teaching techniques do you learn best? And how will that be reflected in your pedagogy? So let me rephrase that or read it again. Read it again. Okay. So what teaching techniques do you learn best with and how will that be reflected in your pedagogy? So I had to think so and that's fun to note that Allison is a 2014 graduate from this program and a graduate from State College High School and is currently developing and building a program at uh, mm, Ribbon. Ribbon, I was going to say Richmond, but Ribbon Christian Academy in California. Okay, answer a question. So I learn a lot through actually um, lab-based um, so mainly when you think about lab based you think about inquiry which is odd because I'm not a science person but that really gives me the hands-on experience that I like to have in the classroom so that I can take whatever I'm what I'm learning being presented to me and actually like utilize it within a certain situation so one thing was is the school the high school that I went to I feel like I've been in college for the past eight years because it was always just you got lectures or two you handed uh, you got a worksheet and that's the way that it was day after day where when I actually got the experience of like inquiry I was just like wow this is awesome because this is what I want this is hands-on this is where I'm learning so even in Penn State classes when I've had those labs that's really where I put in um, the knowledge that I've been learning so like my 201 lab or entomology lab Thank you for sharing. Dr. Ewing, would you like the last question or do you want this question? Um, I'll take this one if that's all right. Okay, you do it. All right. So, <clears throat> Heather, um, you've accepted your first job and um, 
you uh, realize uh, after accepting it, uh, no, no, you didn't accept it yet. You're getting ready to accept <laughs> your first job and there's no extended dates. How do you approach an administrator to help them understand the importance of extended contract days for an ag teacher? Well, first I'd ask him if he has any understanding of what um, extended like contract days are, if he's had any experience of working with them in the past, because when it comes to like superintendents or administrators, a lot of them bounce around from school to school. So I'd really like to see like where his understanding is on extended contracts and then proceed. Um, I would really emphasize the SAE proportion in there and then also talking about how unlike a normal teacher I'm not teaching just one subject I'm teaching multiple subjects so really also having those that extended contract would help me prepare myself when I'm going into the class classroom for the next coming year or so getting that opportunity to really be engaged with the community be engaged with the students and being engaged in my curriculum Thank you. We can do one more pass through to our audience. Last call. Okay. Right. Thanks, okay. guys. One last question. This is also from Jesse. She says, We all know that teaching agriculture is an intense profession. What's your vision for staying charged and not getting burnt out? So, my mission for that and I don't know if this is the right answer or the wrong answer, um, is I would like to see myself in a two-teacher program to start out um, because I really would like to have the opportunity to have someone be by my side to kind of like guide me through the first like few years because they say the burnout is actually within the first five years of teaching. So I would like to see myself have a little bit of guidance through those first five years in order to then go like full throttle into the rest of my teaching career. That way um, I just feel I can just have a sense of like calm, being calm and have support within my ag ed family. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The last question I have for you, Heather, is you mentioned how you felt like A, professional experience is important, and that B, agronomy wasn't being addressed correctly uh, or emphasized in school-based ag education uh, to the level it perhaps should be. And so I want to ask you a series of questions okay. about agronomy. Okay. Because I want to shoot evidence for me how you're going to use your professional experience to make it work in a school-based ag ed setting. So taking that content, using the context of what you learned through 311, 412, 413 to be able to deliver. So the first question. Okay, we have agronomy. Could you please name for me three unit titles that you would teach on agronomy? So I would first um, do like an intro to agronomy, which would be introducing uh, the plants that could be, that would be in it, so like your field crops. And then for my units, for two other units, I guess I would break it down into forages and then also grain as well. So for the three units, you'd have intro to agronomy, forages, and grains. Mm -hmm. I'm going to assume of Pennsylvania or where you ever happen to be teaching. Yes, because the world can just be too much. <laughs> okay, absolutely. So you those three units. I would like for you to identify one way that we can reinforce core academics through those units. So academic integration, if we think about um, an administrator and why are you teaching that, how is this helping advance my school and my school's success, could you describe for me one academic uh, reinforcement of a core academic area you would teach through one of those units? So like science could be one of them? Be very specific, please. Mm. So that's where you're getting tricky. Yeah. This is where I wish I memorized all of them. Ah, you don't have to memorize them. Think about what do you need to know from a, a content standpoint of math, English, or science that you could teach through the context of agronomy and intro to agronomy, 
in forages or in grains. Okay, I take back science then. I want to choose um, math. Okay, so we're going to do math. Yeah. Tell me about a math concept you're going to teach through agronomy. So if we go with the grains. We're going to go to grains. We're going to go about um, bushels per acre. Oh, and so what math concept is that you're teaching? With it considered algebra, I don't know. So bushes per acre, you're going to do what? What are we going to work on there? I understand it's an agronomic principle. What math principle am I addressing? Can I have help? Sure. <laughs> Phone a friend. But I don't know how reliable phoning you would be. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can ask anybody in the audience that you want. Maybe someone who took the class with you. But he would have to know what the core concept is for the math, like actual standard. Heather, if you don't have one, I might risk it. <laughs> Go ahead and ask. Huh? If you don't have one yourself, I might risk it. Go ahead and ask. Go ahead and ask, like. Well, I mean, you're going to need them basic just addition, and subtraction, and division. But is that is that in one of the stand? Is Are that in one of the standards? Concepts? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I said algebra, though. <laughs> That was more of a subject. <laughs> but I appreciate that. Now let's keep going. We know that we've talked about the classroom, and we're talking about three components. I'd like for you to provide for me an example of a way a student through the youth leadership organization could pursue or engage the uh, profession of agronomy. What could you do through FFA related to agronomy? Um, so there is an agronomy CDE um, for FFA. For development, excellent. Yes. Have you looked at that CDE? Yes. What's one thing the students do in that competitive event? They have to identify weeds is Thanks. one. Very good. Now as you can see where I'm leading up to, we have work-based learning, supervised ag experience mm -hmm. through school-based ag education. I'd like you to provide me two different examples of different types of SAEs that a student could have related to agronomy that you taught in the class and maybe they participate in in the youth organization event. So if I did teach pesticide education and like we learned about weeds as well, uh, a student- Pesticide ed in that intro to agronomy? No. Well, yeah, actually okay. what I learned here, there was a little piece of it okay. as well. Um, so a student could go in and they could do like their own research. So they could take like Roundup and make it like versus Gramoxone okay. uh, when it came to maybe gra crabgrass or something and see the ways that the trials like work out because you can't you don't just have to apply once you have to apply multiple times so to see how that work, works out through like one summer and then he could even okay, he or so she one example is an agri-science research project yes. very well done what's another example essay um, placement and where would they work uh, so they could work for Penn State Extension um, in plant science and have um, an opportunity I know Allison Balmer she worked uh, for Penn State Ex Extension in, as a plant tech intern. So that was all with uh, agronomic crops. Thank you, Heather. Appreciate mm -hmm. you doing that. Are there any other questions from the teacher education panel? Thank you so much for coming today and the celebration of knowledge. We appreciate you being here. Our next demonstration will be at 1015 with another Watson, Miss Haley Watson. At this time, we invite you to partake of the refreshments and